Hello and welcome to this uh, introduction to career pilot for SEND schools. My name is Alice Hossant and I'm going to take you through today um, for you to find out a bit more about career pilot and how you can use it in your schools. Um, by the end of the session, I'm hoping that you'll be familiar with the four different zones on career pilot. Uh, that you will have an opportunity uh, to think about how you um, could use the site and consider how it would benefit your students and consider how you would um, use Career Pilot in your context. Career Pilot is a careers platform. Um, it's available online and has four zones that have been created for students age 11 to 19, their parents and carers, and also for teachers and careers practitioners to use in school to support the careers education. The site has been designed by career practitioners um, and has lots of links to really useful LMI information and advice and guidance on careers for our young people. So career pilot can be used as a, uh, to support a whole school approach, which helps you to meet that Gatsby one. So it's very much about putting the student at the heart of their career's journey. So helping them to manage their own career. And we have uh, resources to support progression from year seven through to years 13, um, as well as support for the careers leader in making sure that there's a consistent careers uh, strategy across the school. Uh, we also have resources to support use within uh, tutor time, different subject areas and PSHE. Uh, there is support, as I mentioned, for parents and carers uh, to support young people at home and also support for one to one personal guidance as well. As I mentioned, there are lots of resources that um, you as a school can access via Career Pilot to support this whole school approach. So we're going to start by looking at the student zone. As mentioned, the student zone is aimed at 11 to 19 year olds uh, and it is, can be accessed by them directly to support um, them to find careers information and tools uh, to support with their careers journey. You can see it's really easy to log on. Um, you can just go straight to the home page and you can log in or um, register top right hand corner. Once registered, that allows the student to then start to build up a personal profile uh, where they can tag their interests as they use the career pilot site. So it really sort of personalizes the journey to them. From the home page, they can go automatically through to find out more information about a particular pathway they may be interested in. So you can see they can click straight through to find out about apprenticeships, should they wish. Um, at the top, there are different choices, again, that takes them through to areas they may be interested in. So they could choose to look at jobs or courses or different providers that are local to them. But ultimately, the site is very much um, underpinned by this sort of three stage approach to careers decision making. Uh, so it guides the student through from starting with themselves, thinking about their own strengths through to exploring their options and then planning their next steps. And as mentioned, there are, again, are there those links through to the automatic pathways um, that they may be interested in directly from there as well. So in terms of registering, it's a really quick process. So the students own their own account. Uh, it only takes them a couple of minutes really to fill in the form and um, you can support with that um, or where appropriate, they can do this independently. And they just need to fill in just some uh, simple details about their name, address, their school email, and then they choose your school from the drop down list, which links them through to your school account. So I'm going to show a short video now that's um, available on the um, Career Pilot website that you can share with students and just illustrates um, a really kind of nice approach to how um, can prepare them to become career ready. Imagine your life in 10 years time. Are you being driven to work in your electric car? Eating meatless burgers for lunch with robots cleaning your home? Technology is changing jobs. In 10 years, there'll be lots of new jobs, while others will change or simply disappear. You're likely to be in work for 50 years and have at least 10 different jobs by the time you're 42. Seem like a long way off? A happy future starts with some of the decisions you take in the next few years. So to get ready for your careers, what should you be doing now? Firstly, know yourself. You are unique. 
You have likes, dislikes, strengths, qualities, and things you value that are important to you. These things can help you identify a future career. You have skills too, from school, hobbies, work, or volunteering. Imagine you are learning something new, like photography or rock climbing. You will use a range of different skills. Many of these are transferable, skills that you can take from one job to another. Employers love these. The second thing you can do is do stuff. Trying out new stuff makes you feel good about yourself and builds transferable skills. For example, you may or may not pass your driving test first time. It doesn't matter. Learning new things develops transferable skills and increases your ability to bounce back and keep trying. That's called resilience. Skills can lead to part-time jobs, useful cash and jobs in the future. You can also talk about these skills on job applications and in interviews. So you know what you like and you're good at. You're trying new things and building skills and experiences. What else can you do? The third thing you can do is to make sure you know all your options. Do you know what qualification and grades you need? Will the course or training help you on your journey? Which option would be best for you? And if your plan A looks watertight, always have a plan B and even a plan C just in case. The fourth thing is to make sure you use your supporters. Teachers, family, friends and coaches know you well. They'll help you identify your strengths, skills and interests and help you on your way. If you can, grab a chance to talk to a careers advisor. You'll get individual help with your plan. They're professionally trained and have loads of up-to-date information. They'll listen to you, inspire you and help you create a plan for the future. And there's Career Pilot too. A free website with all the careers information in one place showing you all your options, including information on jobs, courses and lots more. Use the career tools to find out more about you and save all of this in one place to share with your supporters. So to get ready for careers, what should you be doing now? Know yourself. Do stuff and develop your skills. Make sure you know all your options. Use your supporters. Your future starts now. Get ready. Okay, so hopefully um, you found that video useful. Uh, and this is something that you can find on the Career Pilot website and should be a really great way to introduce some of those um, ideas about how to get ready for your career. Um, as mentioned, you can find that on the home page of Career Pilot in the yellow bar at the top. You just click on there and you can share that with your students as part of your careers teaching. Oops. OK, so all three stages of the career decision making um, are um, really divided up on the career pilot website. Um, so as mentioned, it's about, first of all, starting with you. And there are different quizzes and activities that students can do to explore themselves, their skills, their strengths and their values. Then as the second stage of the process is about exploring options. So students can explore the options that are open to them at age six, uh, 14, whether they're choosing their GCSEs or um, 16, when they're sort of thinking about where they might go next. So there are some different um, pathways that they can explore and find out more about there. And then lastly, the third stage is about planning their next steps. So this is a, um, giving them some really useful tools for thinking about how they might plan some actions to help them think about their next steps with their careers journey. So taking each of those one at a time, the first one starts with you. As we mentioned, there are quite a few different activities that students can take part in here. So I'm going to just look at a few of those. 
So the first is the job sector quiz, which is really, really popular with students. Um, it's just really nice, uh, easy to use and fun. Very, very visual. It's uh, got lots of different pictures that students can choose from that explore things they may or may like uh, to think about for their for themselves when thinking about themselves in, in their working lives in the future. So whether they be interested in working outside or working with an animal, it's got lots of different questions. They can pick the ones that they're interested in. This then gives them a really nice kind of match up with a job sector that may be worth them exploring. So it's not suggesting exact jobs, um, because obviously that, that can be quite off putting sometimes if it's not the jobs that they, they pot uh, potentially would be interested in. This is much more about just selecting some job sectors that fit with what they've just chosen within the job sector quiz. So then they can look further into that job sector and just explore some of the types of jobs that exist within that particular area of work. Um, there's also an activity where students can uh, look at what their values are and really think about what's important to them and what their strengths are and then think about what are the different jobs that are out there that would fit with those values or strengths. So of particular interest um, may be that for students that um, wanted to explore how their ADHD uh, strengths may be valued in certain areas of work and also autism as well. Um, so it explores some different um, types of work and employers that are particularly going to value those skills. So then there's also an activity um, that which really starts with a subject or an area of interest and sees where that could lead. So that can be really interesting for some students. So if you have students that were interested in computing, for example, they can have a look there and see where that computing might lead them. So looking at vocational courses, apprenticeships, degree courses and jobs. So really giving them a lots of different ideas about the different pathways that could lead from that interest. Uh, we mentioned also about looking at skills and there's a really great skills profile here that students can start to build up. Uh, the way to, that it approaches thinking about the skills is it asks them a set of questions about different activities they may do in their lives and helps them to identify the skills that they are developing through those activities. It then saves those activities as evidence of where they've been building those skills. So this is going to be really useful for them for when they come to apply for jobs or for courses and they need to write a statement about their skill strengths. They can draw on some of those examples that they've built up from the skills profile and they can also add in additional examples of activities that demonstrate skills as well to part of that um, skills profile. Mm -hmm. So the second stage of the decision process is exploring options. So this is uh, where students would go to look at the different pathways that are open to them. So if they're interested in looking specifically at jobs, uh, there's a whole section here where students can search for a particular job by job title or they can search for jobs by job sector. Um, so we mentioned before about the job uh, quiz. So it might have suggested a particular sector for a student to look at. And this will allow them to really look into more detail into what types of jobs there are within that job sector and what those jobs may look like in detail. So looking at job sector here, if, um, if a student was to look at the um, agriculture and environment type sector, it will open up lots of different ideas of different jobs that exist within there. But there are also some really useful videos as well that show people actually doing the jobs and talking about what they do within their jobs. So, again, some really nice sort of visual aids that could be useful for um, students to get a feel for what life would be like doing those jobs. So as mentioned, you can really drill down into find out more about specific jobs within certain sectors. So if you were to um, click on the animal care worker, for example, it would then bring up a job profile and it gives more detail about what that job actually looks like on a day to day basis. So students can find out for an animal care worker what the average salary would be, what the working hours may be, and if that job is due to grow, due to grow in the future. So you can see here that's um, a growth job. It's going to be growing by 8% over the coming years. So it's just interesting to sort of get the bigger picture of where that fits because obviously we know the careers landscape's changing quite a lot. So really useful information about specific jobs here. 
You can also look at the day-to-day -day tasks that you might be doing within that job. You can find out about the entry requirements and the different routes into that job. Um, obviously, they, they're often a variety of different ways to get into these jobs. Um, and also then have a look at some really useful LMI about the people that are working in this job by region and look at some live job vacancies. Again, just some really useful information that you can dig into with your students and just so they can find out a bit more about what it actually looks like in reality um, if they're interested in a particular job. Uh, the career pilot um, option site also gives um, students the opportunity to find out more about certain pathways so they can search for apprenticeships or search for courses with our really handy search tools. There's also a section within the All Info um, on students uh, with disabilities with additional information on study at further education or higher education and the support that is there. And also some useful links, including links to local offers for local authorities. As mentioned, when students are signed into their account, they have the opportunity to tag their interests as they're going along. So you can see just here at the top right hand corner, there's a little tick box that they can they can select if that's something they're interested in. Now, this is starting to save all of their selections are being saved into their career tools. So it's building up a really useful personalized profile um, that they can really build on as they go through their school. Um, and it gives the the school also a really useful insight into what they're thinking in terms of their next steps. The last stage of the decision making process is about planning those next steps. So some useful tools here that students can use, including an action planner. So if you were talking to a student and they're interested in, in uh, exploring a vocational course at a local college, for example, you might like to set a couple of action points with them. So, for example, they might want to uh, register for the open day of a local college or find out about how they would get to that college, what the local bus route would be to get to the college. Those kind of things they can record as action points within their reports, and then you can come back to revisit those together. So in terms of the career tools, um, there is a dashboard that students can have that provides that summary of all the different areas of the career tools. Um, so it gives them just a summary of those um, areas that they've been filling in, so their top skills, their top job sectors they were thinking about. So it's a nice kind of summary. And then there's also a full report as well. So if you're working as a one to one with a student, um, you can be filling in this report with them. So you can be filling in comments about how they're getting on areas that they're interested in, and sort of building up that report across the year. And that report will move up with them each year. So that's the student zone. Um, there's also a whole area for advisors it's called the advisor zone. And this has got lots of information in here um, to support you as uh, either the careers lead um, or the careers advisor um, or a teacher that's working um, on careers with the students. So lots, lots of resources, access to free training as well. Um, and if you sign up uh, so you can have the reporting zone access, that gives you full access to all of the resources. You can request access to the reporting zone by contacting careerpilot at bath.co.uk. So within that section, there are lots of different resources, as mentioned, including some nice sh short lesson activities, sort of 20 minute lesson activities and also hot jobs packs. So posters and activities related to some really hot jobs at the moment. So there's an NHS pack and also a green jobs pack that you can access. So as part of the um, reporting zone, uh, you have access to the admin dashboard. Um, so when you've set up the, the access to the reporting zone and you will need to sign a data sharing agreement with CareerPilot in order to do this, uh, you will then have access to the full um, admin sort of back end of the website. This allows you to then see how your students have been using CareerPilot and track their progress. So you can see which of the activities that students have completed 
You can also see which areas they're particularly interested in. So it's quite useful here to see what job sectors uh, certain students are into. Um, it might be they have a group of students into a particular job sector, in which case that might influence the type of speakers that you get to come into school to talk to them or work encounters that you set up for them. So it's just a really nice kind of overview of the interests of your students. And you can download those data reports as well to share. You can also access individual records as well. So if you want to look specifically at a student that you're working with, remind yourself about some of the actions that you set up together, you can do that from this end. You can uh, look at the full report and also the action points as well that you've set. Those reports can also be downloaded and shared with parents and carers as well. And there's also access to the previous year's reports on there. So the final zone we just need to talk about is the parent zone. Um, so again, this can be accessed from the career pilot home page, the top left hand corner. Um, you can select the parent zone and parents and carers can then find lots and lots of information and advice and support and um, answering some of those commonly asked questions around some of the choices that you, their young people are facing, um, specific questions perhaps around finance and um, comparing sort of vocational and academic qualifications, um, lots of different questions that are answered there. So a really useful resource to share with your parent community. OK, so that was a whistle stop tour of Career Pilot. I hope you found it useful and I hope you find that there are lots of um, parts of the site that are going to support your students. So thank you very much for joining me today.